Uh, hello, grade sevens. Uh, welcome back to another lesson for social sciences. Where are my learners today? Is it because of load sharing? I don't know. Okay, so I'll just proceed. Then maybe they'll watch later the recording. Okay, so we are still continuing with our history topic. Okay, Chris Evans, I hope you are well, wherever you are. Okay, just a reminder um, about the informal assessment that you're going to write next week for social uh, sciences, uh, which will be there on the 23rd of July. So the topics that I'm going to assess you on are the following the Kingdom of Mali and the city of Timbuktu, 14th century. So that one will be for history. And then for geography, I'll assess you on map skills. So those are the two topics I'm going to assess you on. So you write the test on the 23rd of July. So those topics, you did them in term one. So they are not new to you but we'll try to revise them also from Monday up to Wednesday before you write. Okay, grade sevens. So those two topics uh, from term one, just go through your notes that were given in term one for those two topics. If you've got a textbook, you can use a textbook just to revise and go through. Okay, all right, because I don't want you to fail the tests even if it's an informal assessment. Okay, class sevens. Now let's uh, recap on what we did yesterday, the previous lesson. I hope you were shown the pre-recording. Um, so the main topic that you looked at yesterday the impact of the transatlantic slave trade on slaves. So that was the main topic. Remember, we're still continuing with the transatlantic slave trade. You looked at two subtopics. Number one, rebellion against slavery. Now remember the slaves, wanted to further their resistance to a more violent uh, form, which was called rebellion. So they were against this slavery. And then we looked at uh, Ned Turner and his revolt in 1831. So Ned Turner started a rebellion or a revolt in 1831 when he killed um, the slave owners. So that was his way of rebellion against slavery. So that is what we did yesterday, okay. And then revision of previous uh, activity. Let's just revise the homework that I gave you. I hope you did your homework, Chris Evans. So we're going to revise the homework together. Just correct your work. Okay. Question one, explain what the title of the article mean. Remember I gave you an article which was written, net tenor, no hero. Net tenor, no hero. So that was the title of the article. So what was the meaning of, the, of that title of the article? Well, it just meant that he cannot be considered a hero because the title said, net tenor, no hero. So he was considered as no hero, he was not a hero. So you were supposed to give an answer like that for question one. Just correct your answer.
Hello, Chris Evans. I, I, I had no one in class. <laughs> Are you good? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, before I proceed, can I have your names and say names? Please. I My want name? them. Oh, My just name? type. Just type privately to me. Do you know how to type privately? Oh, I'm happy I have learners in class. I was alone, talking alone. Okay, can I have your names and say names? Just type them privately to me. We have time, don't worry. Okay, I'll be checking as they come in. Okay, thank you, Angelina. Let me just record down. September, thank you. Okay, others. Thank you, Suiso. I see your name. Anyone else? Uh, type in your uh, your name and say name. Others, if you didn't give me. Uh, who are Pili? Give me your name and say name. Hello, Fizana. Give me your name and say name. Bright, is it bright? Of course, should I write that one? Those who are coming in. Ma'am, do not write bright in course. That is my father's PC. Just write okay. Peggy Temba. Okay. Peggy okay. Temba, of course. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. All right. Others, give me your names and say name. Those who are coming in now. Yes, Fizana, how are you? Give me your uh, your name and say name. So that when we assess you, I, I know your names. I'm good. Type in your name and say name. Okay, three seconds. Let me just go back for those who came late. Just a reminder, you know that you're writing informal assessments next week. For social sciences, you'll be writing on the 23rd on, on Thursday. So just a reminder, uh, the topics that I'm going to assess you on. There are two topics. You did them in term one. Now for history, I'm going to assess you on the Kingdom of Mali. You still remember the Kingdom of Mali from term one? And then for geography, I'm going to assess you on map skills. So those two topics, make sure you go through them, you revise. If you've got a textbook, it's good. If you've got notes from term one, use those notes to revise. But we're also going to revise from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before you write your informal assessment. So we just want to finish our topic this week. And then we'll do the revision Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Remember, you did the topics in term one, so it, it won't be something that is new. We'll be just revising. OK. Are you good, grade seven? Did you understand what I said? Okay, so the Kingdom of Mali and map skills. Good. Let's proceed. So I was uh, the recap of previous lesson, what you did yesterday. 
we looked, uh, we looked at these two topics, rebellion against slavery, and also the net tenors revolt in 1831. Okay. I'm waiting for the names and surnames for others. Just type them, I'll see them. Let's proceed. Okay, let's revise our homework. Did you do your homework? Let's revise. Take your homework, make corrections. We revise together. Remember, class sevens, writing and reading is very important in social sciences. You're supposed to read every day and write so that you improve your skills and gain understanding of how to answer questions. Are we together? Okay. Question one. Explain what the title of the article means. Remember, I gave you an article about Ned Turner. The title was Ned Turner, No Hero. Ned Turner, No Hero. So what did that title mean, the title of the article? What did it mean, the title of the article? Ned Turner, No Hero. Okay, so your answers were supposed to be, he cannot be considered a hero. So he was not considered a hero. That's why the title says, Ned Turner, no hero. Okay, so just correct your work there, Three sevens. For question one. Question two. Explain the following statement. One person's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist. What does it mean? People who were slaves would regard what he did as heroic. So to slaves, Ned Turner was a hero. Are we together, Grace Evans? So he was a freedom fighter for slaves. So slaves would see that um, Ned Turner was a hero. But the slave owners would regard him as a terrorist because of the people he made at. So he will be a terrorist in the eyes of the slave owners. So that's what this statement means. The slaves regarded him as a hero. Why? The slave owners saw him as a terrorist because he killed people. Okay, I hope you are correcting your work. Question three. The writer of the letter says, Tena found religious justification for want on murder. What does it mean? A, identify what Tena did. He led slave rebellion in which slave owners and their families were killed. Remember, um, Ned Turner said that God um, talked to him in a, uh, in a vision and he told him uh, to free the slaves. So he was telling people that God is, had talked to him to liberate the slaves. Therefore, he led the slave rebellion in which slave owners and their families were killed. So he used the religious justification to do murder. Do you understand now? He used the religious justification to do murder. Okay. Question B. Explain why he did this. Why did he do that, Netena? It's because his hatred for, for slavery made him to do the rebellion. He hated slavery. He didn't like it. 
So that's why he started the rebellion in killing those slave owners. That was question three. See now, explain how others felt about what he had done that time and why. So other people, how did they feel about uh, his actions? How did they feel? Well, some could have been against what he did. Maybe they said it was wrong because he murdered people. Others could have supported him for his actions to liberate slaves. So other people could have said, he did a good thing. He was trying to free those slaves. You understand now? So there are two sides to that story. Against or support. Are we together, great servants? Let me just check, maybe uh, in name is in name is Hello, Junior. I hope you're okay. Junior, can you type your name and say name? I need your name and say name. Others, they gave me. So just type to me privately. Type your name privately to me. Junior, thank you. And then we proceed. So that was uh, question 3C. Now, today's topic. Thank you, Junior. I can see it. Yes, Mien, welcome. I didn't see you. Type in your name and say name. Those who just came in, Grace Evans, type in your name and say name. I only have four people of a class of uh, six. Thank you, Mien. I see your name. Thank you. I think one person left wouldn't give me their names. Please do so. Okay, today's topic, we're continuing with the rebellion against slavery. We're going to focus on two uh, subtopics. Firstly, we're going to look at, let, just, uh, let me just use, so that you can see. Okay, we're going to start by looking at Joseph Sink and the Amstead Mutiny, 1839. So we are going to, uh, to understand the Amstead and the Mutiny as we go further. And then we will look at the Underground Railroad. So we're going to focus on these two subtopics today. Let's move on. I want you to listen carefully. Stop chatting. Are we together? Okay. I want you to focus and listen. History is about telling stories. So you have to listen. Okay. So who was this Joseph Sink? And what was the Amstead mutiny? Now, Amstead, it was a ship that was uh, that transport uh, transported uh, slaves from West Africa to Cuba. The mutiny. Remember, I gave you uh, uh, key terms to research. I gave you mu mutiny. If I'm not mistaken, it's an uprising, a violent uh, uprising against authorities. Mutiny. Okay. So Joseph Sink, he was born Senyiwe Pierre. So this was his original name, African name, but he was changed to Joseph Sink. He was a rice farmer from Sierra Leone and the son of a local chief. So he came from West Africa, Sierra Leone. In 1839, he was captured by slave traders and shipped to Cuba in a Portuguese slave ship. So 
he was captured with other slaves and they were shipped to Cuba in a Portuguese slave ship. So this Portuguese slave ship is called the Amstad. That was the name of the ship. Okay, a Cuban slave trader named Ruiz bought the slaves from West Africa, including Joseph Sink. Okay, and then what happened? They were transported to Puerto Principe in Cuba, another town in Cuba. Now, as they, when they were traveling along the way, remember they, they, were, uh, they would uh, cross the Atlantic Ocean and when they reached Cuba now, uh, they, uh, they were in another ship to their destination. A cook joked and told slaves that they would be beaten after the voyage. So there was this cook who was preparing meals on that ship, cooking. So he made a joke to the slaves and said, look, man, you are going to be eaten at the end of the journey. He was joking, but he didn't tell the slaves that he was joking. Now, this frightened the slaves. They were frightened, scared. Are we going to be eaten? They were scared now. Now, Joseph and other captive named Grobo started to free other slaves on the ship. So Joseph and another man, they started moving around the ship, freeing what? The other slaves. Because they were scared that they would be eaten. They attacked the ship captain, who was called Ferra, Ruiz, and other crew members. So they started to attack those crew members on the ship. And what happened? Let's proceed. The crew, however, managed to sail to New York State. Remember, New York was a free state in US. There was no slavery that was happening there. So the crew managed to sail there. On arrival, hungry, without food, the mutineers, now the mutineers, it comes from the word mutiny. Those who perform the mutiny is the slaves. The mutineers, the slaves, were captured and imprisoned. In court, the shop owners, oh, the ship owners wanted the slaves to be tried for piracy and murder. So now the ship owners were saying, these people, they are pirates. They were trying to kill us. However, anti-slavery lawyers defended the slaves. Remember, New York was a free state. So there were anti-slavery organizations there. So the lawyers supported the slaves. They argued that the slaves had been illegally kidnapped. So these lawyers were saying, no to the ship owners, no, you kidnapped these people illegally. The slaves were set free in March 1841, and in November, they were sent back to Africa under British protection. So Joseph managed to return home uh, with the other slaves. They were sent back to West Africa, which was good. So that is Joseph Sink and the Amstad mutiny. So the mutiny happened on the ship of Amstad. Do you understand now? The mutiny happened on the Amstad. So after the lesson, try to find the meaning of mutiny and you, uh, you get to understand what's happening. Let's proceed. This is a picture of Joseph Sink. I think someone just painted the picture of him. So this is the guy who started the rebellion on the ship. But his effort paid because at the end, they were taken back to Africa, which was good. 
Now, we are done with Joseph Sink. Let's look at the Underground Railroad. What was this thing? Was it a system used? What was the pain? It was a network of secret routes and safe houses in the United States used by slaves to escape to freedom. So they were using this underground railroad to escape from, from American South. The safe houses were called stations. The owners of the safe houses were called station masters. So those owners who, uh, who took control of those safe houses were called station masters. Now, there were also people who accompanied the slaves to escape. They were called conductors. About 100,000 slaves managed to escape to other free states using this system. So it was very good. At least some of them, they tried to escape. About 100,000, that's a lot. So they managed to escape to the free states in the United States of America using the underground railroad. This map is showing the escape routes. Now the red part is showing the slave states. This is the American South, where all the slavery was happening. The blue, those were the free states. There was no slavery in the blue states. Now the yellow lines, can you see the yellow lines? These are showing the routes that were used by the slaves to escape. So they were escaping from the American South and they go to the blue states here, the free states. Here, they were escaping. Can you see? So this, is, this was the underground railroad and escape route. Okay, so this map is showing United States of America, you can see. The red part is showing uh, the slave states. The blue is showing the free states. So the slaves were trying to escape from the red part, red areas, to the blue ones. Okay. Okay. So please, in the exam, don't say the red, the red areas and the blue. I'm just trying to explain the colors. Okay, great seven. Good. Okay, so we've come to the end of the lesson. I have a key terms for you to research. May you please research on these key terms because we are going to focus on them in the next lesson. Fugitive Slave Act. Militant Action. Army gorillas, treason, emancipation, and refuge. Just find out what do they mean, those words, so that when you come to the lesson, you already have an, an idea. Are we together, great servants? Just copy the words somewhere. Or take a screenshot. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Keep your names and say names uh, coming in. Oh, that's good if we're together. Okay, I hope you're done copying. Your homework. 
please do your homework. I feel good when you do your homework because you're practicing. Writing makes one perfect. Writing and reading, those are important skills in social sciences. Now, two questions for you. Question number one. The trial of the Amstead mutineers is regarded as an important test case of the time. Find out what a test case is and explain why it is regarded as an important test case. So find out what does test case mean, number one. You can Google that. You just Google test case. What does it mean? And then you explain in this regard why it was an important test case. The trial of the Amstead mutineers. That is question one. Question two, explain why Amstead is a strange name for the ship on which Joseph Singh led his mutiny. So the word Amstead, uh, I think it's Portuguese. So just Google about it, find out the meaning or the translation of Amstead to English. Now, it is a strange name for the ship. So when you find the real meaning, you're going to understand why, why it is a strange name for the ship. And then you explain your answer. Good, are we sorted? So only those two questions, grade seven. Don't disappoint me tomorrow. Have your answers with you, okay. Is there anyone who didn't give me their names? Just copy your, your homework. Copy your homework somewhere. Maybe if you're writing. Let me know when you're done. Oh, to the keywords. Okay, I'll go back, Fizana, when I'm done. I'll go back and show you. Let's wait for others to finish the homework. Are you done? Press seven. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Others, they are not responding, so I don't know if they are okay. Okay. Let me go back for who asked me again to go back. Is it Fizana? Okay. Let me go back on the key terms. Here you go. The key terms. Okay, you are sorted. That's good. Okay, so grade sevens, don't uh, don't forget about the informal assessment. Remember, I said two topics map skills and the kingdom kingdom of mali okay so the second email is my email if you've got any questions i'll see you again tomorrow same time take care be safe keep home bye bye no, no, no.